All right, guys. While the uh, calculations and and conversions from the our unit of measure, the U.S. unit of measure to the uh, metric system isn't really that important in our day-to-day -day jobs. As an HVAC technician, being able to calculate the different areas and volumes of rectangulars, rectangular ductwork, square ductwork, rooms, and round ductwork is important to know and understand. So there's some basic mathematical calculations that we'll, we'll review here. Hopefully we all remember these from high school. First one is the area of a square. The area of a square is calculated by multiplying the length times the width. And in this case, that is 4 feet by 4 feet. And that equals 16 square feet. If it, ha it was 5 by 5, then it would be 5 times 5. And we'd end up with 25 square feet. All right. And what that does is that calculates the that calculates the area of the square, which is represented by this the yellow here inside of this square. Now this is important to know. So if you have a square piece of ductwork, and later on in your career you're looking at uh, calculating the ductwork size for a new home, it, it it's critical to be able to match the cross sectional area or the area of the of the ductwork to the um, airflow capabilities of the air handler. So you need to know how to calculate the area of a, uh, of a square. You also need to be able to calculate the area of a rectangle. And it's done the same way. You take the, the area equals the length times the width. And if you take a look at this one, we have 6 feet by 4 feet equals 24 square feet. Now, if you need to convert to meters, remember you should have an app already on your phone. So you can take 24 um, square feet and then plug that into your app and come up with the answer of 2.23 square meters. And that is, is how we're going to do that for this, for this lesson. We don't need to know how to do this, nor will we ever remember how to do this either. All right, so calculating the area of a round piece of duct is a little more complicated, and there are apps that will take that area but and, and calculate the area for you. But the one thing that you need to know is, for example, if we take this, if we take this, let's say, for example, this is a round piece of duct. And I know this is in centimeters, but we're going to, we're going to do it in a, we're going to calculate a little bit differently that makes it a little bit easier for us to understand. First of all, if this is a 10 inch round piece of metal ductwork, and you need to know how much area is inside of that 10 inch round metal ductwork, the formula is pi, and we'll talk about that in just a bit, so that, that's that little symbol right there, times the radius squared. So let's go through that one at a time, pi. Pi is th is a, a mathematical constant that has been was calculated centuries ago. And if you want to look at how they did that, if you Google it, you'll you'll find this big long page and how they did it and still not understand because I didn't. Well, you may, and if you do, let me know. So the the constant of of pi is 3.14, and it goes on for I don't know however for many digits after 4 but we'll use 3.14 so you so that is pi and that is why it that's used to calculate the the um, area of a circle and then it is r which is the radius now the radius is the distance of between the center of the circle to the outer edge of the circle so if this is a 10 inch round duct from here to here is 10 inches then the radius of this duct would be 5 inches. All right, so if it's a 16-inch duct, then your radius would be 8 inches. So that's how you figure the radius of, of the circle. And that's normally what we use is ductwork or a cylinder if you're doing some, some hydronics. But in this case, we're, we're going to assume that it's a piece of ductwork. All right, so in this instance, we're using the metric system, which is two centimeters, and and for the exam, you're gonna you're gonna have these questions on the exam, 
it works the same whether it's inches or centimeters and you'll convert it using your app all right so you take pi three times three point one four one times the radius squared now remember uh, when you square something it for example this would be two times two that is two squared so that equals four if this were a 10 inch round duct the radius would r would equal 10 and then you have to take and you have to square 10 which is 10 times 10 so a number squared is that number multiplied by itself so if this were a 10 inch round duct um, it would equal 100 r would in this formula, the r squared would equal be equal to 100. Does that make sense? All right, so in this formula, our radius is 2 centimeters. So it is pi 3.141 times 4, which is, is 2 squared. And it equals 12.56 square centimeters. And if this just happened to be inches, then it would be um, 12.56 square inches or if this was a uh, two foot or four foot wide piece of duct with a two foot radius it would be 12.56 cubic feet if it happened to be in feet all right so it's it gets confusing as you get into the centimeters but don't worry about the value just pay attention to it and f calculate the area based on those numbers and then just pay attention to whether it is metric or the US uh, system of measurement. Okay, so like I said, when we need to know how to calculate the different areas and volumes of certain shapes for load calculations, for air changes, if you have to put in, some, if it's a commercial building, for ductwork sizing, if you're doing uh, hydronics, you need to know cylinder sizing and if you're putting glycol into a system you need to know the volume of of water that would be in that hydronic system so it's pretty simple to calculate the volume of a square or a rectangle and you just take the same formula we used for the for the the area which is width times length and then you just multiply it by the height so if this is the room that you're sitting in if you took your tape measure you measured across one wall that would be the length you measure across the other wall that would be the width and then you would measure from floor to ceiling and that would be the height so you take all three of those measurements length times width times height that gives you your cubic feet of space so if the room that you're sitting in right now you look at and it's a commercial building and you need to have a certain amount of airflow fresh airflow per cubic foot of space of the room that you're in per cubic foot of space of the room that you're in, you would have to take your tape measure and, and calculate the the volume of air that's in that room. So just take a look at it in that manner. And if you're doing a load calculation in a residential home where you're going to be putting in a new system, then you need to do this room by room. And think about this. When you do a load calculation, you have to measure the volume of air and the volume of the space that 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 you have to condition you also have to measure the area of the walls you have to measure the areas of the windows the ceilings the floors and everything else so these calculations you will be using so just make sure that you remember you remember how to do this you can always refer back to your notes there are also apps and software to help you do this but you still need to be familiar with it And like I said, it volumes of fluid for a refrigeration system, oil, and um, additives for for hydronic systems. If if you're far enough north where you need to worry about those freezing. Okay, so the volume of a cylinder, it's the same calculation as the the area of a circle. So you take the pi, which is 3.141 times the radius from the center of the circle to the outer edge of that circle and you square the radius which means you multiply the radius times itself and then all you have to do is take the height and multiply it by height and that'll give you your um, cubic feet or cubic centimeters whichever you may be doing volume of this cylinder right here 
All right, so this is this would be for um, chilled water systems. If you have to have a certain amount of so many gallons of chilled water stored in a tank, or the same thing with with hot water, how many gallons you need, you need to be able to figure out the volume of the cylinder. All right, so that's the end of this lesson. Thank goodness. Just remember uh, how to figure out the radius of your uh, round duct for the volume of a cylinder and the, and the area of a circle and become familiar with the apps that are available for you to use to do these calculations to make your job easier. All right, guys, we will see you on the next lesson.